years, good lives can degenerate to this sort of behaviour. Only a line of police vans now separate the fans. Now, are you all right just parking a bit further up here so they can see that that camera's going to film down the side of it? <laughs> We're just asking the CCTV van now to move in so that the fans can see that they're being filmed. It's obviously the biggest deterrent. Once we've got them on film and we're watching them, they don't want to be caught on camera doing anything because they know ultimately we can use it for any post-match inquiries. Police are doing their best to keep the fans apart. With tempers on a knife edge, it doesn't take much to tip them over. Instead of having a nice escort into the ground, the escort stopped being an escort and became a public order incident. X-ray 99, edge ground working to LM Road Control. Uh, there's a bit of trouble at the ground, if you can get well, hold on the bus, sir. Uh... Don't fall, you don't fall. Yeah, I am. There are cameras everywhere, and the fans know it. Killer, the Millwall fans sold the van, and maybe were wary about being caught on film doing anything and actually stop what they were doing. The first phase, getting the Millwall fans into the ground, is nearly complete. But there have been casualties. The buses. The mindless yobs and vandals on board the buses have just absolutely uh, trashed them for no reason whatsoever. How the Millwall fans will get back to the station is anyone's guess. I think if you say it set the tone for the rest of the afternoon, uh, the busted windows going through, it did. And we knew that if we were going to deal with them on the way out, that it probably was going to get the same response. For most fans, it's the action on the pitch that's got their attention. The police are more interested in the rivalry off the field. Obviously, a lot of animosity going on between the two sets of supporters, a lot of verbal abuse. At one point, the Millwall fans tried to charge towards the lead supporters, but we managed to prevent them coming together. Four forty-five. the game is over, a 4-2 win for Leeds. Now starts the second phase of the police operation and also the most difficult. Gentleman being pushed away now. Yeah. We've had problems with him outside the south stand um, previously today. He's been they must get the Leeds fans away from the ground before they can let the Millwall fans go. The commanders made the decision based on all the disorder that had taken place to hold the Millwall fans inside the ground to naturally let the Leeds fans disperse. Most supporters leave the game and go home peacefully. <laughs> But if there is Leeds risk in the area, things can get ugly. This is footage of Leeds rioters after a game against Cardiff City in 2005. Filmed by a police spotter, this shows how quickly violence can erupt. We try and maintain the line because it's numbering strength to move the fans away. If, you, if needs be, we use horses and mounted and dogs. They were slowly driven back. But it didn't all go according to plan. Sometimes a couple of officers get drawn out or somehow they get isolated, and that's when the pack can smell blood. And the crowd, although they're coming forward together, not one of them probably wanted to get hit by a baton. During this confrontation, the police prevented Leeds fans from getting anywhere near their rivals. Today, the plan is the same, but it's not going that well. Keep moving, please. Keep moving. The mood has changed, and they don't seem to care that they're on camera anymore. Can you move, please? Can you keep moving? Can you keep moving? Can you keep moving? Yeah? How many times do I need asking? Behind this gate, the Millwall supporters have been locked into the ground until it's safe to leave. In the video van, Paul's cameras are monitoring the rising tension. Just watching this lot here now, uh, one would expect that they're going to start throwing bricks on the uh, traffic cones in a minute, you never know. 
The eye in the sky can see more danger heading towards the ground. These fans have left the game early. They're now heading back towards the stadium. Police are worried it will lead to trouble. A uh, group of about 15 of them, they're now coming back towards the traffic light junction. The cops know what's coming. They're well prepared. Just hold your lines. We're going to form a box at this point. The majority, you know, 99.99% of the lead supporters, they come, they pay quite a lot of money to watch a game of football. They enjoy the game of football or they don't. They go home and move on. There's some people, it's more than football. It's, it's, it's not about watching your team. I don't even think sometimes the result matters. The score is a score to settle not what happens on the pitch. The battle lines are drawn. Coming up... Missile madness as the hooligans capture a bridge and innocent motorists come under attack. What are you doing on the back of that car? Oh, my God! Leeds Football Club is the scene of a major pitch battle. Not on the playing field, but outside the ground. Leeds supporters are rioting, trying to get at Millwall fans locked in the stadium. In the way, a thin line of police officers. They turned their anger onto the police. If there'd have been less officers there, I'm sure that more officers would have been injured trying to prevent that disorder and prevent the two sets of supports coming together. In the thick of it, a CCTV van catching the troublemakers on camera. In there, it's from the middle of Wesley Street, now at the junction. And above it all, a police helicopter watching hooligans heading towards the ground. And now, now we've got them on video, the, the rear of Wesley, um, Kapake. The classic football hooligans are known to the police as the Leeds Risk. They've left the game early, and a few might not even have gone to the match. The risk element, a lot of time, turn up at the end of the match because they're not interested in the match. They're not interested in football. They don't follow their team and hope that they win on a weekly basis. They follow a team for trouble. Police HQ are monitoring all the pitchers from the helicopter. Officers in charge can see that the dog squad are needed. That's the group we're on about. They've got uh, three dog handlers with them now. Uh, no, no, and you've still got quite a large group on uh, Wesley Street itself, um, just above car parks A and B. I'm still looking back down towards the junction. Uh, they might want this person a little bit further back. <laughs> The Leeds Risk and other fans encouraged by them are regrouping just 50 metres from the ground. And they aren't taking kindly to the police dogs. One hooligan even takes a swing. Now, now we've got trouble on Wesley Street. They're uh, having a good dog amplers. That's trouble bottom end of Wesley Street. Now the dogs are biting back. Yeah, but they have been dispersed quite quickly now by the dog handlers. And they're really making a meal of it. He grabbed hold of the dog handler in panic. So because the dogman couldn't pull away, he couldn't get his dog off him. And therefore, he suffered more injury. The Leeds United risk supporters have rushed forward, kicking, punching, just trying to attack a dog, which <laughs> to me is just, <laughs> just a no-no. <laughs> It's not just the Leeds risk causing trouble. Go across over to that far side and then try and get round the other side. Back at the ground, the CCTV van is capturing more disorder. Yeah. You okay? see that traffic cone a minute ago, did you see? Yeah, I can see him. He's walking up Wesley Street now. He's a young kid, he's got his arms out. He's got his arms out? He's... 
He's pointing at horses now. Oh, he wipes off. This is where CCTV really comes into play. Because of the power of the cameras, we can see so far that we can get good shots of uh, the people that are committing these offences. Walking up Wales Street.